start for our webinar for March, PPD Webinar Series 2021. Tonight we're going to talk about file structures and multiple holiday layouts. This is a question that frequently comes up, and there's, uh, there's a number of things that uh, we need to understand before we go forward. And uh, what I want to get into is why are there two parts? Uh, first, to understand how to run multiple holiday show layouts, you must understand the file structures within XLite so you know exactly what files you need and have a good understanding of where they need to be. Uh, second is multiple holiday layouts can be quite confusing. More props is more confusing, as Russell would say. So let's go ahead and get started. Part one, file structures in XLite. What does an XLite folder consist of? It's important to understand this because as you grow into X Lights and you do multiple shows, you need to understand whenever you're moving files and what files are important and what they consist of. Um, then it makes it just a lot easier, not just for the holiday, uh, multiple holidays, but it also makes it easier whenever you're talking to anybody within the hobby. And when you get to a point of understanding where you're helping other people, you have a better understanding of what these files stand for and what they do. So with that, uh, I do have four notes here that I want to tell you. We're narrowing our focus of the Excellent Lights file topic. I could go on for about an hour about the file structure and what's important and so forth. Um, uh, this is not a deep dive. This is, is as best as I can do. Is it, it's like um, it's like think of a football field, um, and 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 the football field being X Lights file structure. And you, you, it's you know, all I want to do is I want to go to the 20 yard line from the from the field goal line to the 20 yard line. And I just want to give you a little bit enough to get you going. Uh, if you have questions about folders and files in XLites, um, they're at the halftime session. Uh, when we get to the half point, by all means, please put up your hands in chat. Where do we start? Number one, where do we start? Well, we have to do one thing, one really important thing. We should start with a folder. And we, I'm not telling you to use exactly these words, X Lite show folder, but it kind of makes it easy. Kind of tell, it's a tell all. And why we would you, why would we do this? Well, if we if we make it as easy to find this folder on your computer, and then it's easy to remember. What's going to happen is whenever somebody else is helping you with your show, you then you know exactly where to go. So, uh, and why does this come up and why am I talking about this in a webinar? Well, I've helped uh, and Robert has helped and a number of folks have helped a number of people who do not understand how to organize files. So it's good to start with one place and one place only. And my suggestion is on your desktop or in your documents folder. Don't use your, don't use your download folder as your XLite show directory. Don't use, um, don't, uh, I won't say don't use a thumb drive as a show directory because you can, but if you're starting out, it's best not to do that. It's best to have some place where you always go to and it's always the same place, okay? That's the bare minimum. I'm not gonna go into, oh, you could put it in your Dropbox, so you could put it on Google Drive, you could put it on your OneDrive. There's a lot of things you can do. I just wanna get you started. And if you're new, I don't wanna confuse you with all of the options. Just remember, simple, and easy. Where is it easy to find? Where is it easy for you to remember? Uh, well, I don't know where I saved it. It's either on your desktop or you want to put it in your documents folder and you want to call it X Light Show Folder. It, it is, it's that simple. I, um, I also uh, recommend for multiple holidays that you open up that X Light Show Folder and you click on this button here that says New Folder here. Now I'm in Windows. If you're in Mac, I don't know how to help you, but um, if you, if you create your XLite show folder. My recommendation is to start with one file folder. You don't have to do this if you don't plan to do them, but if you're going to do a Halloween show or you're planning on doing a Halloween show, go ahead and create a Halloween folder. If you're doing a Christmas show, go ahead and do your Christmas folder, okay? Um, but plan to have one folder per holiday. I'm not saying you have to create every one of these. You do not have to create all of them but create the ones that you're probably going to do. I'm just using these as for example. What we're going to do is we're going to assume that 75% of the people who are doing a show this year 
are doing a Christmas, they're doing it for a Christmas show. And the reason we're going to select Christmas is because it is the most popular. If we go out there in uh, uh, sequence vendor land and we go and look at the number of sequences that people produce, you'll, you'll notice that is, there is a far greater likelihood to see Christmas sequences rather than Halloween. And there's a reason for that because there is a greater call for Christmas. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't work on, and we certainly have worked on here, uh, a significant number of Halloween songs, uh, or, you know, we tried to get a couple Independence Day songs out there and such. But keep in mind that, um, that most people, this is geared more towards Christmas. If you do a big Halloween show and you could care less about Christmas and it's just this little blip on the radar, by all means, make, Chris, make your Halloween show folder, and we'll get into that later in, in, in some later slides. So, um, a couple things after you've opened or cr after you've downloaded and installed X Lights, you're going to point to your designated folder that you've created. Now, please forgive me, I created this file first and then I had an afterthought and went back and made the slides prior to this. So just imagine for, for the time being that where it says test here, it's not test, it's Christmas uh, inside your X Lights show folder here. So uh, with that being said, what I want you to do is I want you to imagine uh, that x -Lights will create specific folders for you as you use it. Things will be created for you whenever you have need for them. So some of these files and folders that show up in your x -Lights directory for your show. Now keep in mind we're talking about our Christmas folder. It, you have a backup folder that's auto-generated. You have a color curves which saves the color curves that are available in your sequencing. You have an X schedule data, which uh, file that you can access your X schedule uh, uh, files and different show schedules and so forth. Uh, you have a shaders file. If you download and utilize shaders, X Lights will create that for you. You'll also have a render cache. If you, as soon as you hit render, X Lights will cre create a render cache and cache some effects in there as long as you have the sequence open. And then uh, finally, you have a palettes, saved color palettes uh, folder. Recommended folders. These are folders. These are folders that I recommend that you create for yourself inside X Lights, inside your Christmas folder, or inside your X Lights show directory folder. Your images, you, you create an images for um, uh, pictures and videos. You create a music folder for your MP3s and your uh, WMA files and stuff that you're going to use for your songs. And then also create an import folder for any downloaded sequences. And this, what this does is this contains the, the basic uh, properties of, of a sequence when you create a sequence to make it easier for x -Lights to find them whenever x -Lights does its search for different files. Um, the other side of the coin is, is now that we've got our files, our, our folders set up, we have to have a native x -Lights, uh, we happen to have some native x -Lights files that are created as soon as we create a new show folder and we open up x -Lights. And the two main important files that you're going to see or hear people talk about are the x -Lights RGB RGBFX.xml file and the x -Lights Networks .xml file. The RGB effects file, which is more known, more well known as, is your entire X Lights layout. This includes your models, your groups, the location on the grid where they're at, the settings for them, the sizes of them. It remembers everything. It's your literally your entire show wrapped up wrapped up into one folder. Now the network file on uh, is is exactly the same thing as the RGB effects. The only difference is is it doesn't have any prop data information, it only has controller or uh, universe channel counts, and it, it only pertains to the network of the, uh, of the show that you're running. So if you're, if you're brand new and you, you don't have your controller set up, your network file isn't going to have much data in it. It really might not matter until you put your controller in there and start assigning your outputs for one, one prop or another prop. Uh, that's whenever your network file becomes rather important. But your RGBFX file also remembers what output you assign things to, and the two files work together. 
Finally, the last file that you see, and you can see them here. This is a this obviously is a show directory. You can see that we have an xlights underscore keybindings.xml file. And what this is is this is a hot cut uh, a hot key or a shortcut key file that xlights will call upon and remember any preset shortcut keys that you program it into xlights to help you work faster and make movements easier within xlights so that whenever you're typing or if you're if you're uh, using your mouse with one hand you can quickly hit a hot key and you can easily add an effect to the sequence screen uh, I highly utilize this there is an entire video that is dedicated to the key bindings um, and uh, you're welcome to go ahead and look for key bindings on YouTube look for key bindings on the PPD website you'll find a video that's uh, pretty well done on that um, you're also going to see uh, another thing called xlights backup files and what these are these are xlights underscore RGB effects dot XBKP these are identical the moment that you s that you press the save button on your layout they're identical to your backup file or, or to your xlights RGB effects file so what xlights does is it makes a duplicate just in case you happen to have a corrupted network or I'm sorry excuse me a, a corrupted layout file it will actually generate this one XBKP file that you're able to if you're in Windows if you see my cursor here you can hover over top of it you can right click on it and you can rename it and you can select that XBKP and change that to .xml and by doing so you actually can replace your corrupted with the last known backup that you have right from your main xlights directory now notice that there is a backup folder and i don't know that i talked about that earlier but inside that backup folder you can set it to back things up now it's, it, it, it xlights will automatically back up every time you open that's the default setting for xlights when you open the program it will back up every xml here's your XML documents and it will also back up uh, your sequence files as well into a folder with today's date on it for you and then it will continue to do that until you tell it to stop doing that or until you change the settings which is uh, a video for another day so um, moving on you you have you have those backups so you can always rebuild your layout if you have a problem that's what's really important to know Next, the next two kinds of files that you're going to see are what we call XSQ files and FSEQ files. Now, an XSQ file is your sequence file. This is whenever you're in there, you put the butterfly effect down, or bars, or the tree effect, or uh, the video effect, or shader, or whatever. This is this is a file that actually activates X lights will open that sequence if you're in this file menu see how it has it's actually tied to the program itself and it will activate or turn on X lights or open it up to this sequence and this is your XSQ file this contains every native effect and setting to create a sequence or the sequence you created please note that images shaders and videos does this all sound familiar these are all files that we talked about earlier images shaders and videos are not saved inside an xsq file that's why what we do is we package or we zip folder or zip up a sequence when we distribute them because the act of zipping a folder or zipping up a sequence extracts from your uh, images it extracts from your shaders and it also extracts from your music folder anything that's tied to that sequence so that if that package sequence leaves this this mother computer will say and goes to somebody else's computer or you put it somewhere else then everything needed to recreate it will be in that package okay so that's why it's important that's one of the reasons why having all of these folders here inside your uh, inside your file structure is very important uh, the second type of file that you have that is a sequence file is called the F FSEQ this FSEQ is used to play your sequences via X scheduler or FPP uh, what it does is it combines all of the data from the XLights network file 
it combines and, and it mashes it with all of the data that's inside your RGB effects file and it tells how to apply those effects to those models that are in your layout and the and along with that it tells it how to kick that data out through the network. Now I, I want you to have a look here at the size of this file right here of this S FSEQ. You're going to notice that it's two uh, uh, two gigabytes of data. This is a two gig file. Now this is a rather large sequence and maybe yours won't be this big. big. Maybe some uh, of you will look at that and say okay that's about average and maybe there's a couple of you that will say uh, no I've got a bigger file than that. Um, if you have a large channel count show this this number goes up higher and higher. So just be aware that your files, the more sequences you have and the more channel counts you have, the higher the channel counts, the more pixels you have, the larger your FSEQ file is going to be. So there is uh, a few things about some of the main files and one of the nice things again about XLights is it does create backups of your files for you. It, it will do this specifically for your sequences by giving you what's called a sequence.xbkp file. Now, just like we did with the RGB effects file, you also have the opportunity or ability to right click and rename the sequence. So if your sequence file gets um, corrupted and you open it up and you try to open it, it doesn't want to open, you can delete the original file and you can go to, in this instance, test plasma underscore XBKP. All you have to do is right click on the, uh, right -click on the folder or the file, rename, and then select the XBKP, erase that, and add .xsq. Once you make that change and you hit enter, uh, Windows, Windows should tell you, are you sure you want to change it? You click yes. And then XLights will now see that file as an openable file uh, through XLights, and you'll be able to hopefully recover your data. Once again, you'll also have backups of your XSQ files inside your backup directory after your sequences have been open or have been after your X uh, program has been uh, opened it makes a backup and until you change the default settings and then if you make changes to it it may not back up as often so this is the one slide that I can uh, that I uh, popped into my head and I think kind of sums things up for everybody who's brand new to this the whole hobby of of uh, X lights and who doesn't understand all of this file talk what what do we need to know these files for why is this important well this is why it's important whenever you need help or you're we're, we're, we're diagnosing things through a chat window or we're we're in uh, uh, you know I, I'm out getting groceries and somebody has a question and I can look at my phone and I can say oh can you post this or hey uh, can you send me your RGB effects file then you know exactly what each one of them does basically this is the breakdown if you if you had to assign a pro uh, a, a tab a controller or a, a tab in X lights to a different file they would be such as controller tab would have your network covered the layout tab has your RGB effects covered. So everything that you change in here, this is what you're editing. Everything you change in here, you're editing for the network file. And then obviously in your sequence, everything you change in here is going to be changed in your sequence.xsq file. Now, the, uh, of course, the only caveat to this is any video effects shaders or uh, uh, music or um, uh, images are not going to be wrapped up in the sequence file. That only happens when you package the sequence. So sometimes you'll hear people say, can you package your sequence and send it to me and I'll look at it. So that, that, that would be under the tools menu up here, hit tools and it's the second option down, package sequence. You have to have the sequence open and bam, you're done. It opens this little zip folder and it packages it neatly. So n now that you, you kind of have an idea of of this, of the structure of X lights in the files, uh, why do we need to know all of this stuff about them? And and the answer, the answer is it, just like I said, it, being able to share that information when you have questions, because because let's face it, the the hobby is much easier now 
than it used to be, but it's still complicated. Uh, it, it feels like every time we make a step forward, we, we get knocked down another step because other things come in and we get confused because of other problems or other challenges. If you understand the basics of the file structure, you're, you're one step away from being able to have somebody be able to help you, whether it be somebody from here, uh, maybe it's going to be in the Zoom room on Wednesday night. Maybe it's going to be uh, somebody you talk to on the phone and they can walk you through it and they can say, oh, go look at this in your XML file or whatever. So um, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to end part one right here.